Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel's Eternals is introducing us to characters hidden on Earth the whole time. And they've been doing a bang up job protecting this planet. We have watched. Unguided. We have helped them progress. And seen them accomplish wonders. Yeah, nailed it! The Eternal's absence remains the biggest question going into this film, especially since their apparent knowledge of Captain Rogers back to his days in the 40s makes it clear they weren't just sleeping for the past century. So what's really going on here? Marvel Studios' deeper agenda with this Eternal's film might be to open us up to the truth that all kinds of beings were living in secret on this planet the whole time. Beings like the mutants. Uh, don't go, don't go! I swear, this isn't gonna be like WandaVision where we all thought Evan Peters was Quicksilver and stood for Magneto instead of, mm, my name's Boner. <laughs> Honestly, big X-Men names like that and crossovers with the same actors from the Fox films, that's probably not the way Kevin Feige's gonna go with his reboot of these characters. Really, the first and only time he's discussed X-Men in the MCU was at Comic-Con back in 2019, and he deliberately used the term mutants, not X-Men. There's no time left to talk about mutants. And how mutants and I think we can read that as a signal that Feige's X-Men plan is really a mutant plan. Pre-X-Men, pre-Wolverine, to properly establish mutant kind in the MCU from its origin point. And I've long believed that Eternals is the perfect place for that backstory. And now this trailer gave us a few clues indicating that could be the direction they're going. The first is this mysterious volcanic eruption shown only briefly, but if you go through it frame by frame, you can see a flash of gold and a flash of violet white, and then a plume of smoke suddenly disappearing, almost as if some of the Eternals may have been in the heat of this eruption trying to bottle it up, or that other forces may have been in the midst of a kind of battle during this. And then another shot shows the Eternal Sprite crying while standing on a lava-covered terrain, like she's mourning some civilization the Eternals were unable to save from this seismic destruction. While some are wondering if this volcano could be the eruption of Mount Vesuvius as shown in Loki, I'm not so sure because those volcanoes are clearly different shapes. I think this could be part of the Great Cataclysm, a disaster in an ancient war that involved the Atlanteans, the Deviants, and the Celestials. The Kingdom of Atlantis and Marvel lore, once a land-based kingdom, was attacked by forces of the Deviant Empire, and to stave off the Deviants, the rulers of Atlantis opened up the magma pits beneath the city, but doing so ended up rocking the entire continent with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Meanwhile, the Deviants were also attacking the second host of Celestials, and the Celestials are like, oh, what? So the Celestials retaliated by causing a nuclear cataclysm on the planet's surface, which ended up sinking both the deviant-controlled kingdom of Lemuria and the kingdom of Atlantis, both of them plunging into the ocean. Now, in the past MCU, we have gotten at some hints at these kingdoms' existences. Iron Man 2 featured a map with markers for future Marvel locations like Wakanda, as well as some marker in the South Atlantic still yet to be identified. Now, the Eternals film was shot on the Canary Islands just off the west coast of Africa. Africa, not far from that marker. So they may have been trying to go for some geographic similarity there. So Sprite in this moment could be reacting to the volcanic destruction of either Atlantis or Lemuria in this great cataclysm as these land masses are sinking into the ocean. But what does this have to do with mutants? I'm getting there. The character of Namor the Submariner. So Namor is considered to be Marvel's first mutant, technically, as part of the Golden Age era lineup with Captain America and Phineas Horton, a name that actually appeared in the MCU alongside Howard Stark's Expo. That would be a point of history that I've theorized the Eternal Fastos could have been supplying Howard Stark with the vibranium for Cap's shield. Maybe why that shield shows up so much in the trailer. But before I continue, thank Thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Every can of Bang has zero calories, zero carbs, zero sugar, and zero artificial colors. Each 16 ounce can contains 300 milligrams of caffeine, super creatine, COQ10, and branch chain amino acids. I'm sipping on birthday cake bash, which I feel like I deserve because uh, I had to spend two birthdays in a row away from all my friends. There's always next here. Really, I drink a can of Bang whenever I need to pick me up in the morning or when I need to plow through a long video and I want my mind to be alert or when I want to take a bite of birthday they cake but not have the cakey texture of it so check out bang on instagram you can get 10 percent off your order at bangenergy.com when you use the code new rockstars 10. there you can buy a variety pack of bang energy or grab a 12 pack of your favorite like peach mango lemon drop rainbow unicorn if you're feeling mystical use that code
code NEWROCKSTARS10 and receive 10% off your order of Bang Energy. That's code NEWROCKSTARS10 for 10% off. Now the trailer also shows Cersei handing a dagger to some mystery figure. A dagger that actually looks like it was inspired by the ceremonial golden dagger found in the royal tombs of Ur, the Sumerian port city in ancient Mesopotamia. That dagger could have been a token of loyalty from the Eternals to the people of Atlantis. And I love the idea of Namor later fashioning this into the pointed end of his spear. Now Kit Harrington is playing Dane Whitman, Black Knight, who wields the ebony blade, a weapon that was actually briefly wielded by Namor in the comics so another way Namor could be tied into this new history. There was that line in Avengers Endgame about undersea earthquakes that Okoye told Natasha to not worry about. Did you get a reading on those tremors? It was a mild subduction under the African plate. Do we have a visual? How are we handling it? Not. It's an earthquake under the ocean. We handle it by not handling it. Perhaps the ancient rivalry between Atlantis and the Deviants of Lemuria has rekindled, and Wakanda, itself a kingdom with ancient history, knows all about it and wants to keep it a secret from all the other powers of the planet. But while Namor may be Marvel's first mutant by publishing date, chronologically the first, or at least one of the earliest mutants on Earth, was in Saban Nur, better known as the X-Men villain Apocalypse. And we know this Eternals film is visiting several regions of the world throughout history, from ancient Mesopotamia to what looks like the Spanish conquest of Mesoamerica to ancient Egypt. And assuming we actually get to see the creation process of the Eternals by the Celestials, it seems likely the origins of humankind and mutant kind will also be explored, since the history of all of these is connected in Marvel lore back to the Celestials. The DNA imagery in the Eternals trailer might be pointing to this genetic history, and we know from WandaVision that Wanda Maximoff had some kind of genetic predisposition before her exposure to Infinity Stone radiation because she was able to cast low-level probability hexes as a young girl before she ever came into contact with the Mind Stone. So, individuals with a mutant gene still seem to exist in the MCU, and Eternals could be the movie that clarifies how all of that began. So really, the mutant plan may be explaining the origins of this world and the societies that live on it, and how some of those people are just mutants. So that kind of opens the door to us understanding how mutants show up everywhere in the future, as opposed to starting with the story of one particular mutant because we already really saw that in the Fox films. So again, it's probably too soon for a full X-Men lineup right now in the MCU, but Eternals could establish the MCU as a world in which mutants have always existed, and then getting us going on a desperate search for where the first mutant of the modern age will appear. So let me know your thoughts on this theory, and to support this channel, check out one of our many great merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss, follow NewRockStars, subscribe to NewRockStars for more analysis and breakdowns of everything Marvel. Thank you for watching. Bye.